Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host uh, of the uh, Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the blackbrazildoday.com blog, where I discuss or analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. Today, I'm going to touch on an article that I put up in uh, April of 2020. But even though, even as this is a throwback to look uh, probably about a year and a half ago, it's even more than that because uh, the, the article that I, I analyzed and I translated is, if I'm not mistaken, is probably from the late 90s. And it was one of the first articles that I came across uh, when I discovered that there was uh, an issue among Black Brazilians in, in terms of this discussion of interracial dating, marriage, uh, recreation, uh, procreation, um, and why it seemed that so many prominent Black Brazilian men uh, married non-Black women. Now, I've said this before, but it, it had to been around the year 2012 or 13 where Black women activists online t took this issue uh, to social media and it just exploded. It was a topic that everybody was talking about. Um, I know now that there had been some, you know, some discussions about this before, but never to the degree that it came out in about 2012 or 2013. You know, this was with the, uh, with the rise of social media, of course. So whereas this was a discussion that was, you know, some people would have in the community, it didn't grow to the proportions that it, it did uh, previously because probably exactly because of social networks where people would introduce a particular topic and, you know, hundreds of people would comment on it and it would just explode on the internet. Um, it was always a, a thing of, you know, did you see who such and such is dating, you know, or there goes another one. It would always be like, you know, whether it's a, a Samba Pagoji musician or, you know, a, a millionaire soccer player or, you know, uh, a journalist in the media. This became really a big thing, as I'm saying, a, around that time, 2012, 2013, where there was a, it was a topic that was dominating social networks and black Brazilian oriented social, let's say, commu uh, communities on Facebook. Um, before Facebook, as I've mentioned before, there was a, a social network called Orchid. And this same discussion was going on in Orchid before Brazilians slowly started to make their way over to Facebook. And then uh, even though that discussion had been started on Orchid in Facebook, it just exploded. So as I was following some of the debates that was going on, um, I remember coming across this article. It might have been in Hassa Brazil magazine, if I'm not mistaken where this was one of the first articles I saw tackle this issue. Like, oh, because I was new to it. I knew about the debate in the United States. I knew that, you know, even before the days of like 1991, when Spike Lee came out with his movie Jungle Fever, I knew this question of interracial dating was big in the United States. But as I was investigating Brazil, you know, I, a lot of us will have the impression like, okay, they don't have as much... Uh, there's not as much venom that comes out in Brazil because they've been doing this for so long. So you would just assume that there was no problems, you know, between black men and black women to say, Hey, this is how we get down. But like I said, with the rise of the discussion, I come to find out like, wow, there are a lot of people who see this as problematic, particularly when you look at the history of what's called in Branca Cimento, this idea that black people should desire to have whiter skinned children by successive generation mixes with white or almost white partners. But that's not the case. It seems that even with the rise of the knowledge, because a lot of people weren't familiar or, or aware of this whitening ideology that came out of the late 19th century. But, you know, again, as you know, I've shown the painting several times, the uh, Ham's redemption that is called where it shows a succession successive generations of mixing with whites until a, a white or white appearing baby appears. And within, you know, two to three generations, you go from a dark skinned black woman to a white or near white looking baby. And a lot of people aren't familiar with that, even though they know in their own families 
they've been encouraged to seek, you know, try to have a relationship with a whiter person. You know, we have to improve the race. We have to lighten our color. Right. So in the rise of this discussion, you had mostly you had a lot of black women pointing fingers at black men and black men responded, responding back, saying, well, why are you pointing a finger at us when you guys, you women do the same thing? So this is, again, this is one of the first articles that I came across this discussion. So, uh, again, this is an article that I posted only in 2020, but this article came along after I had done a number of articles on interracial relationships uh, and uh, opinions on interracial relationships for a number of years before. And I just wanted to go back to one of my first exposures to the, to the whole question. So this article is called Black Brazilian Men and Women Accused of Having White Preferences. So basically you have both sides saying, you know, well, you know, you prefer white women and the other side saying, oh, well, you prefer white men. You know, whose side wins out? I mean, who's, um, you know, who's right? Where did all of this begin? Uh, what has sparked this apparent rule that says successful black man he almost automatically is going to have a white or near white partner so let's i i, I want to reiterate this because i know that this type of thing has been said often in black communities in the u.s but i feel like it's a little bit exaggerated because the numbers don't necessarily bear that out the numbers do bear out that um there is a a, a percentage of well-to-do black men who do marry white women or at least non-black women but overall generally black americans are still they still have black partners you know this is something that you know it's there's there's no real consensus on how this works in brazil because first of all it's it's difficult to ascertain or come to a firm conclusion about who's actually black and who's not and if you can't decide who's black and who's not black, then how can you decide what's considered a mixed relationship or interracial relationship? That's a whole nother topic. Again, that's another story that I've had to cover and coming to change my own, my own views on how race works in Brazil. But for now, let's just get into this piece. Okay, so uh, again, black Brazilian men and women accused of having white preferences, both sides accusing the other side of preferring white partners. So the recently, the relatively recent debate over what's called palmitaging isn't actually new at all, although the actual label is. Perhaps five years ago or so, Afro-Brazilian women started labeling the pattern of successful Afro-Brazilian men having long-term relationships with white women as palmitaging. And those men who practice such dating habits were called palmiteros. Both terms come from the root word palmito, which refers to the crunchy white vegetable that is called hearts of palm in English. So this is a picture of a, a jar of, of, of hearts of palm. Obviously, um, if you can if you can look at the uh, the term that's under the words hearts of palm right here, you can see it's probably this Spanish term that says palmito, palmitos. So in Portuguese, it's the same word, palmitos. Now, this picture here is a, a, a photo of a, a popular comedian named Yuri Marçal. And he's like, you can see he's making fun of it. He's a comedian. He likes to make, he likes to, he has ironic comedy and he's making fun of this whole uh, palmitage and discussion. It's, it's like a lot of black women have the view that black men do anything. They crave to, to have a white woman. And so you see the white woman being, first of all, palmitaging just means it's it's a way of, 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 it's a term that denotes a person who seems to have a, a, a preference for dating white. And so being that the vegetable is called palmito, they created this term palmitero, specifically speaking on black men who seem to have this hunger for dating and marrying white women. So you can see what Yuri Marsal is doing here. He's hugging this bottle of, of, palm, of, of palmitos. You know, he's he's making fun. He's poking fun at the whole thing about palmitaging, like the black man who's just got to get his hands on a white woman, right? So <laughs> that's what's ironic about this photo. Anyway, so um, Yuri, Yuri Marsal is one of the few black men I've ever known of in Brazil who has said openly, like, look, I don't date white women. I only date black women. In general, you don't hear many black men say that, even if they do 
date specifically black women, you're not going to say them. You're not going to hear them say that announce it to the world publicly where, you know, Yuri Masao is one of the few, you know, popular black men that I've ever seen in Brazil who's actually said that verbally. Um, anyway, um, let me just keep this going. Just since about 2014, the debate has escalated from just black women making the accusations of black men. And then in social networks, black men in turn were making the same accusations against black women. Black women has, have always maintained that they don't palmita or swirl, basically, asserting that because of the abandonment so many black women have experienced due to so many black men flocking to the arms of white women, they had no choice but to open up their options if they wanted to secure long term relationships. The question here being who's right, who's wrong? Are both sides equally guilty? I've actively followed the debate since about 2004 or 2005, and I conclude that both sides have contributed to an enormous gap in efforts to unify the comunidade preta, meaning black community, against systematic white supremacy. Nowadays, the topic is entering the political realm with so many people rightfully concluding that the interests of black Brazilians as a whole can never be addressed when so many people seem to be talking black, sleeping white, consistently whitening the race and effectively returning any gains made by Afro-Brazilians to the white community via generational miscegenation. Again, as I've said, this is a topic that I've covered up and down. Uh, this was an intriguing story of uh, a popular hairstylist in Sao Paulo and just showing he posted a picture of his family for like, I think it was like Black Consciousness Month or week. And people took issue with him po making a post showing, you know, his father who was darker skinned, the progression to his skin getting a little lighter then his son being progressively lighter and then his son having a, a white or near white looking daughter. So in four generations here, you saw in action, this, 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 uh, this painting of, uh, you know, Ham's redemption, you know, it was like, why would you post a photo like that? I mean, obviously, okay. It's not to say that you don't have the right to date and marry who you choose to marry, but they just thought it was kind of crazy that he's, you know, he's posting a picture like this during the black, the month of black consciousness, and he's showing this whitening of his family. Now, he didn't necessarily allude to that, but that's how people took it. Like, man, well, what, are you, what are you thinking about here? It's Black Consciousness Month, and you're showing four generations that goes from a dark-skinned Black man to basically a white girl with blue eyes. Like, why? Is that something to celebrate? Um, soccer plays a lot into what people are seeing on TV and the attitudes that people take because it seems that every major black Brazilian soccer star always ends up marrying a white woman. This was a piece that uh, a friend of mine wrote back in 2018, and he actually crunched the numbers for that particular, the year of that particular World Cup in 2018, where he says 76% of Brazil's World Cup stars marry white women. Is love really colorblind? And, you know, the whole question of the whitening process and the transfer of quote unquote black money continues. This story here is pretty, um, I can't remember the source, but the woman in the picture, if I'm not mistaken, it was her who said it in the picture, like she, she wanted to have a baby, but under one condition, that baby had to come out white. And she said she married a white man, but this guy just, he, I have a friend who's a professor at the University of Wayne State. He kind of reminds me of this guy. It's like, this guy, I can't consider him white. And the daughter didn't come out quite white, but as you can see, she's a lot lighter than her mother. Um, what else? So this is this article, this, this title right here is something that it's only been something that you will hear black Brazilians talking about in recent years, because for most of the time that I've been studying the country, nobody would say something like this. Miscegenation destroys black people, interracial relationships and the decision not to have relationships with whites. It's this these type of articles are still and the, the attitude behind them are still kind of rare because you still don't have a lot of black Brazilians talking about like, look, I'm going to marry somebody in my own race because they've been taught the exact opposite from the time they're, you know, they're very young. Um, analyzing palmitage and the racist policy of whitening the black population. Popular rapper MEC that he's probably. I can't say, you know, where he stands in terms of popularity today, but he was one of the top rappers in Brazil for some years. He developed uh, several businesses. He has his own clothing company. 
He appears on a late night talk show and he tells it like it is. Brazil applauds miscegenation when it lightens the skin, but when it darkens it, it condemns it. The, int the intriguing thing about MEC, then people called him out because it was like, you talk so much about these black issues, but you married a white woman too, right? <laughs> MEC, that's a whole nother issue, right? A whole nother question. Um, let me see what else we have. The racist face of Brazil's miscegenation. This is a really good story. Yes, interracial love does exist, but some black people also use white people as a social passport to feel more accepted, according to a, a, a social influencer. So that's just, like I said, there's a, a number of articles to go through on the blog if you're interested in this topic. But let me um, get back to the story at hand. So um, 23 years ago, and that's 23 years ago from the time this article was published in 2020, in 1997, in an article entitled King Ten Hazon, meaning who's right, Sandra Ventura tackled the issue in a mainstream media vehicle and set the stage for an ongoing debate that within a few years would continue in one of the first social networks used by Brazilians, ORCID, and then later in Black Brazilian communities and platforms such as Facebook. With recent calls for amor afrocentrado, meaning Afrocentric love and amor pareto, Black love, I thought it would be a good time to revisit that article that was first released in August of 1997. Now, that another thing just to point out, would I these two terms that I just uh, I was talking about here, amor afrocentrado, meaning Afrocentric love, and amor pareto, black love. Um, there are a number of activists and people who decided to start promoting the idea that black men and women need to get together. They need to see each other as the first option for having relationships. And that's something groundbreaking in Brazil because that has never happened. You, you generally just didn't see that. People generally have this idea that love has no color. And deep down to me, when I hear a black Brazilian says that, say that, it just kind of means like, I'm not going to tell you flat out that I'm going to marry a white person. So I'm going to hide behind love has no color so that they feel like they justified themselves and just the freedom of the heart to fall in love with whoever without being questioned about their choice, right? So I can remember in the late 80s and early 90s uh, with Black Consciousness Hip Hop, there were a number of American rappers who were talking about the necessity of, of uh, Black men and women being together. There, there was a, a period of, you would hear this in a lot of hip hop lyrics that were like um, praising the Black woman, like, you know, we need to treat our women a certain way. Um, so this coming to Brazil is something that's just really it's 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 a watershed moment because it's just you you don't hear very many people espousing this type of view that we as black people need to stick together, including in our relationships. So um, that's that's really big. There was even uh, a couple of social networks and, and websites that were dedicated to bringing black men and black Brazilian men and women together. Again, that's that's for Brazil. That's something big. So anyway, 